But God had promised through Jeremiah that their captivity into Babylon would only last 70 years. And so God fulfilled that promise. And in 536 BC, the people of Israel were allowed to return to their land, at least those who wanted to. Only about 50,000, though, came back to Jerusalem. Most of the nation stayed in captivity. They'd become comfortable and they'd built themselves houses. And those stayed in captivity scattered throughout the nations of the east. But about 50,000 of the remnant of Israel returned to Jerusalem in about 536 BC, and it's their descendants who are the Jews today. They rebuilt the temple, uh, completing it in 516 BC. Eventually, they beautified the temple with the return of Ezra in around 458 BC. And then finally, the Old Testament history ends with Nehemiah coming in 444 BC and rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. So that is the whole history of the Old Testament. In fact, if you were to look at your table of contents in the beginning of, the, uh, of your Bible, you would be able to see exactly the story that I've just told. And I'd like to connect that with you if you'll look at that, and we'll see that on the screen here. But notice just what we have seen. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, that covered that first 2,500 year period of history. And then we have Exodus, in which at that time God delivered the Israelites out of bondage. Remember that as they came across the Red Sea. Leviticus gives us the laws that God gave while they were at Mount Horeb. It lasted about a month in which he gave the Levites their laws that they were delivered to Israel. Uh, Numbers is the period of time in which they traveled north and went through the wilderness and eventually came to the land of Canaan. Deuteronomy is God's final message through Moses before they enter the land of Canaan, reminding them to obey his laws and not be like the previous generation. Joshua tells us how they conquered the land. Judges and into Ruth tells us that period of time of 450 years in the period of Judges. 1 Samuel then brings us to the first king of Israel, which was Saul. 2 Samuel is the second king, which is David. And then 1 Kings up to chapter 12 is the third king, Solomon, and his reign. At chapter 12 of 1 Kings is where the nation divides north and south. And they continue divided through the rest of 1 Kings and through 2 Kings into 2 Kings 17. At 2 Kings 17, we have the nation of Assyria that comes and conquers uh, the northern kingdom and takes them captive and leaves Judah only from 2 Kings 17 through the end of that book in chapter 25. In chapter 25 is when Babylon comes in 606 and takes them all away captive and eventually destroys the city of Jerusalem in 586. That is covered in more detail just of the southern nation in First and Second Chronicles. When we get to Ezra, that is, skips about 70 years and tells us then about the Israelites returning back out of captivity and rebuilding Jerusalem and rebuilding the walls in the book of Nehemiah. The book of Esther that you see there tells us a period of time from about 480 to 470 in which a queen, a Jewish uh, queen Esther uh, was able to deliver the Israelites from extinction by the Persian Empire. Now what's complicated when you look at your table of contents is to see that there's a whole bunch more Old Testament books. But the rest of those books from Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, which are the poetic books, and then the prophetic books, which from Isaiah to Malachi, all of those books fit back within the period of time that goes from about 2 Samuel through the book of Nehemiah. And all of those fit in that period. And you have to actually read each of those books to find out when, it, when, that, uh, when they fit in to that period. For, for example, you have uh, the, pro the Proverbs, which are wrote mostly written by Solomon. They would be fitting back then within the period of 1 Kings chapter 1 through, through chapter 11. Or if you were looking at the Psalms, which are mostly written by David, that would fit back within the period of 2 Samuel. So you see each one fits in a different period. And the last part of the Old Testament then is not written chronologically. So that's, that's a challenge for that. 